Welcome again. Today we describe the nature and explain the implications of exponential growth in human populations. We calculate and explain from given data the values of crude birth rate, crude death rate, fertility, doubling time, and natural increase rate. We analyze age-sex pyramids and diagrams showing demographic transition models, and we discuss the use of models in predicting the growth of human populations. By the time you see this, the population of planet Earth would have risen significantly from the 7.139 billion shown here. For almost all of mankind's existence on Earth, the population was well below 1 billion and only exceeded the 1 billion mark for the first time around the year 1800. It was at this time that the Englishman Thomas Malthus wrote his famous essay on population. Malthus predicted that by 1950 the Earth's population would exceed its carrying capacity. By the turn of the 20th century, technological advancements like soap, disinfectants, and running water created a huge dent in the death rate. Millions of lives were spared from diseases like cholera. With the discovery of penicillin, even more deaths were avoided. Humans were winning the battle against pathogenic bacteria. But birth rates remained high. People still valued large families. Societies were agriculture-based, and many people lived on farms, and children could assist with the harvest and other duties on the farm. Few, if any, contraceptives existed, and there was no education about family planning and population control. By the year 1950, the Earth's population had reached the level of 3 billion tripling in just over 100 years. But the food shortage that was predicted by Malthus was only avoided through the work of Norman Borloff and other advances in science and technology. New varieties of cereal and new methods of cultivation and harvesting. The green revolution in agriculture saved millions of lives in less economically developed countries, or LEDCs. Big cities were becoming bigger, and the population of some countries began to grow exponentially, as death rate further declined, but birth rate remained unchecked. Millions in LEDCs continued to have large families and to lack knowledge about family planning and contraceptives. The planet's population grew exponentially. And by the mid-1970s, the population bomb had exploded. The United Nations and many of the more economically developed countries had realized the implications of this exponential growth and sought to educate people in LEDCs about birth control. The most populated nation on the planet, China, implemented its one-child policy, while the world's largest democracy, India, continued to grapple with finding a solution. In time, it became evident that population growth is best managed by improved quality of life and education for all. Today, both China and India enjoy unprecedented economic growth as the quality of life for millions begins to improve. 
China's radical one-child policy is credited with reducing its population by a massive 0.4 billion, while the South Indian state of Kerala boasts of its population control through education and an improved quality of life for all of its citizens. During the 20th century, it became clear that as countries develop, they undergo a changing demographic or a demographic transition. In states of underdevelopment and poverty, both death rate and birth rate are high. Countries in this stage are referred to being in stage one of the demographic transition. Very few countries on planet Earth remain in this state today. Most of the poorer LEDCs are experiencing falling death rates due to improved conditions and advances in medicine. Birth rate is slower to respond and initially countries in stage 2 see a rapid increase in population as birth rate far exceeds death rate. This continues as birth rate begins to decline but death rate further declines as people improve their quality of life and their level of education. Eventually, when most of the country becomes well educated and almost all people have a good quality of life, the country enters into the developed state or stage four of the demographic transition where birth rate and death rate are in a steady state equilibrium. A stage five of the demographic transition is also recognized as some European countries and Japan continue to experience falling birth rates and if the death rate is higher than the birth rate the population will begin to decline or experience negative growth. Another way of studying the demographic transition is to use the age-sex pyramid. Many LEDCs have been undergoing transformation and moving through the various stages of the demographic transition. One such country is the tiny Caribbean nation of Trinidad and Tobago. Here we see its age-sex pyramid for the year 1983. This is typical of a country in stage two of the demographic transition with high birth rates falling death rates and an increasing population. The evidence for high birth rates showing up here in the large lower section of the pyramid with population very high in the lower age groups. 30 years later with improved education and significant economic growth the age sex pyramid has transformed. Birth rates are now in steep decline and death rate continues to fall. Population is still on the increase. Economic growth is happening and most people of childbearing age are seeing the wisdom in having small families. As the demographic transition continues to take effect and this country begins to move into MEDC status, its population is moving into stage four of the demographic transition. And models predict that in the year 2023, the age sex pyramid would begin to take on this kind of shape, with even further reductions in the lower part of the age sex pyramid due to falling birth rates and greater expansions in the upper parts due to falling death rates. Having gone through the exponential growth section of the demographic transition, the overall population growth of this country 
was not as significant as we might have expected. One reason for this is large amounts of emigration for jobs and a better quality of life in places like Europe and North America. But today, as the quality of life improves, Trinidad is seeing a new flood of immigrants and the balance is beginning to shift. The accuracy of models that predict changes in demographics is limited by this immigration and emigration. For there are other factors that control how these will change. In addition, models are limited by unforeseen events like hurricanes or earthquakes, which can completely decimate populations. In studying these models, demographers use a range of terms. The crude birth rate, the number of births per thousand individuals in a population per year, the crude death rate, fertility, the doubling time and the rate of natural increase. The crude birth rate minus the crude death rate can be used to give the rate of natural increase. Here with a crude birth rate of 309 minus a crude death rate of 200, we end up with 109 new people per thousand per year. That converted to a percentage gives us 10.9 as the rate of natural increase. A shortened way of looking at this formula is to say the crude birth rate minus the crude death rate divided by 10. And this would give the rate of natural increase. The doubling time can be found by 70 years divided by the rate of natural increase. So a population with a natural increase of 1% would take 70 years to double. With improving quality of life, demographers forecast that the population of planet Earth would begin to stabilize midway through the 21st century and that our population is not likely to double in the near future. But for a planet that's already in overshoot, where the ecological footprint far exceeds the carrying capacity of the environment, the challenge in the 21st century is to find a way towards meaningful, sustainable development. And to do this, we must reduce the ecological footprint and increase the carrying capacity. And in this way, we will have sustainability. The time is now for yet another revolution.